Uh, David, uh, Janice and Brian Doherty, you went to meet them, uh, I believe, a weekend or two ago. Tell us what this is about. Yes, this was last weekend. Uh, I, I spent a, I spent the whole weekend with them. They are currently, they're both Scots, they are currently in Ireland, in the Republic of Ireland. Um, the, their story, uh, which is well known to the political leaders in this country, is, as, as Brian Doherty has made a point of trying to enlist political help, um, to overcome um, the the criminality and uh, cover up that he's encountered. Uh, their story started um, in August two thousand and fourteen, late July, August two thousand and fourteen. Uh, they'd moved to a very uh, rural part of Scotland, and it is located near um, Fraserburgh and Peterhead uh, in Aberdeenshire. And um, they were approached. They've got they've got four children. Uh, and one of whom is uh, autistic, and they were approached by a somewhat creepy neighbour who wished to have access to, sexual access to their autistic son and offered them £25,000 to do with as you please if he could uh, have access to, to this boy. Um, and uh, Brian Doherty told him in no uncertain terms where to go and uh, then reported uh, the, the issue to the National Crime Agency. Um, after around a week of emailing, they said, just go along and speak to your local uh, police, Police Scotland. Um, and he did, and he spoke initially to a, a Sergeant Buchan, and then went in to make a, a report to two other officers who Sergeant Buchan said would be ideal uh, to, to deal with this matter. So he went in to make the report, and the two officers turned out to be very inexperienced and young officers. Um, and within 24 hours, um, Sergeant Buchan uh, was at the door of um, the Doherty's house, um, persuading them that there was nothing, there was nothing amiss. Um, what can I do? He repeatedly said. What can I do to persuade you? There's nothing here. Uh, there's nothing to worry about. I've spoken to this man. He's not a paedophile. Everything's fine. So that was within 24 hours. Um, and 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 the Doherty's are saying, no, 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 no. It's a problem. This this man's a risk. This man's a threat. This man's dangerous to children. Uh, what happened in the aftermath of that was um, there was a, a lot of strange events in the local estate. They tried to warn the, the, the nearby landowner, the, the landowner that rented the property from, uh, who also had children. Um, and then they were looking at uh, eviction. They were also looking at social services involvement. Social services were very concerned about their interest in, in paedophiles and they were very concerned about their children. And one of their children wasn't in education even though they were, they were homeschooled and homeschooled with the knowledge and approval of the local authority. Uh, Brian Doherty, incidentally, is a teacher. That's what he was doing. He was a high school teacher in the Fraserburgh area. Uh, so, so claiming they weren't in, in, in schooling uh, was, 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 was factually incorrect. So the, the pressure mounted. And after, after um, about a month of this, with social services taking an ever closer interest in the family, uh, they concluded that there was going to be an attempt to seize the children. There were suggestions that they were delusional or, or, or you know, imagining this problem. The problem wasn't investigated. There was no investigation. People who are familiar with the Holly Gregg case uh, will understand what's, what the, the game plan is here. Uh, all of a sudden, you start having issues of, of, of psychiatric concern raised and, um, and, 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 and child welfare and... Um, are, are your children safe because because you've, you've reported a criminal action? Uh, so they decided to spend a, a week in, in Ireland and start to write to uh, political um, people of power, such as Nicola Sturgeon, to seek help. And then the story got um, much, much more severe. Um, now, we've got um, a detailed interview on this, which we'll be launching in the... Uh, dispatches series just shortly. It's, it's five hours of audio, um, some of it quite harrowing, but all of it very accurate and 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 and, and painstaking and um, and heartfelt. And and I would encourage people to to seek that out and and, and get that information firsthand. So what subsequently happened in Ireland is there was more pressure from Irish social services culminating in the family being, the children being seized by two social workers and four police officers, four Garda officers, two of whom were armed. Um, and when this came to court, 
the conclusion was there was not there was no case to answer really there was no allegations against this family and their children were returned and the judge was quite scathing and told them that the information had come from Scotland, information which contained allegations that they have yet not seen, they don't know what they're being accused of, uh, was not to follow this family around and they were to be left alone. But they were not left alone. They were followed. There was constant activity outside whatever house they were staying in. And ten months later, the children were seized again. This time there was uh, five social workers and eight guard the officers, four of whom were armed, and the children were taken, taken by force. Their, their eldest daughter is 13 by this point, and is, is quite able to say that she doesn't want to go with the police officers. She was marched down, down a, a flight of stairs with her arm up her back by a large guard officer, and, and taken by force. And um, they were held on basically an interim care order, which is meant to last for eight days. That was six months ago, and they haven't seen their children in five months. Uh, so, so they don't even they don't even have contact, David. Is that correct? They don't have contact anymore. Um, the the youngest son um, had some bruising. Uh, there was three three instance, instances of of uh, bruising when he was in care, and in the third case, um, Brian Doherty took a photograph of the bruising on his uh, eighteen month old son. And as soon as he took a photograph, the social worker said, "We're very concerned about how your mental health is presenting here." and have not been allowed to see the children since. Incidentally, on the mental health issue, they did take the, take the, the, the step of, of finding uh, independent psychiatrists and having a full assessment done of their own mental health, and the report on that was um, stellar. There was no problem there at all. Um, so it's a family that have no criminal record. I mean, they're teachers and you know, school teachers with... Uh, you know, actually very high profile, very, very uh, sort of stellar teaching career. Um, no, no history of any sort of criminal wrongdoing. No allegations against them. No allegations of child neglect. In fact, the, um, the, the person appointed by the Irish state to protect the interest of the child has written to them and said that, that, that your children are a credit to you. They're loving and kind and care for one another and they're very... You know, you know they're, they're great kids. So there's not even a, there's not even a suggestion that they're bad parents. The only suggestion is that they reported a paedophile in Aberdeen, um, and then the world fell in, in upon them. The world in the form of three states, because there's been there's been um, pressure here applied by Police Scotland and Social Services Scotland, the police the police service of Northern Ireland, and the Garda and Irish social, social services. Is there anything that people can do to help? I mean, can people contact you, can contact them through, through you and at least offer, uh, at least offer support? Uh, they can, uh, and they, they can contact them through the column. Um, they can also, um, I, I list at the end of this audio, um, people that can be that usefully written to, to encourage them to help this family. Uh, that would include um, Nicola Sturgeon and Enda Kenny, um, the respective heads of, of two of the states involved. Um, and it would also include, we've, we've got emails and things in, in the audio series that list the, the, the people that should be contacted. So when we put that up um, live, we'll make sure there's a full list of names and email addresses. Uh, because what we need here is people to get involved and start asking questions. Why are these people being denied access to the family? Why have they not seen their kids in five months? Why are the children seized? What, what um, interest do Irish or indeed Scottish social services have in this family in any event? Why are, why are they being denied legal aid? Um, they, they put a, on their own initiative, put together a habeas corpus writ for the High Court in Dublin. The High Court refused to accept the habeas corpus writ. Why? There are many, many questions to ask. Do, do they know what this condition of their children is, where they're being held, uh, and uh, do they actually have answers to these questions or have they just disappeared into a black hole? They, they don't know in detail, no, they haven't seen them in five months. They, they have a certain amount of email communication with uh, with the, the uh, guardian appointed by the Irish state who, who, who says the children are well, but they don't, um, they don't get to see them, which is a pretty thing. Yes. I, I would just point out before we leave this this one there's one other question one question that's not really suitable for their for the government or the wise overlords um, there doesn't seem to be any genuine 
complaint or threat or um, allegation against this family at all. And, and they've, been, they've been hounded in three countries because they reported a paedophile. Who has the power to do that, Mike? 